If you are a fan of softball, you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. From softballjunk.com, we're bringing you more softball than anyone on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm your host, Gary Leland, and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. Make sure and take a look at all my videos and all my blogs all my softball information on my website at fastpitch.tv. Now on today's show, I have a great interview with former Olympian Crystal Bustos, who's commonly referred to as the Babe Ruth of women's fast pitch. But before that interview starts, let's watch this short video about my softball magazine, which you can find at fastpitchmagazine.com. Oops, sorry, I was reading this month's issue of the Fast Pitch Magazine. You're not familiar with the Fast Pitch Magazine? Watch this, you are going to love it. Looks great, right? Want to find more about the number one coaching tool on the internet? Go to fastpitchmagazine.com today. Crystal, thanks for joining me on today's show. We haven't talked in a couple years, I think, since NFCA. Yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah, yeah. So how's life been treating you? What's going on? Tell us something new. You're coaching now? Yeah, life is good. I'm at uh, a community college in California, Mount, Sac uh, Mount San Antonio College in, in California. Um, I've been doing their hitting for the past year. We did really well. We came in second, went eight innings in the final game. Um, couldn't have done you know any better. We did we did a great job and look forward to getting into season this year and and hopefully win it. Yeah, that sounds that sounds exciting. Found, sounds like you found the home there maybe for a little while. Yeah, definitely. Uh, coach Rojas that's there. She's the head coach, and then Marcel Torres was our pitching coach, and Coach B, you know. We, it took us a while to get you know used to each other's like coaching styles and then come up with our own little thing and uh, I think towards the end of the season we finally meshed a little bit better as a coaching staff we kind of got everyone on the same page and I think the girls finally came together and you know we definitely peaked at the at the regionals when we wanted to and then moving on to the state finals and everything and you know the girls did a great job of coming together and offensively I think we hold every category so I think it's pretty good. It sounds real good. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it's something to be proud of. Yeah. Hey, I've got something new we're going to do here. We tried this on another interview I did early in the year. I asked all my Facebook fans uh, okay. to ask you questions. So sounds I figured good. instead of me just coming up with them, let's see what the fans right, want to know. Let's see what they want to hear, right? And we got we got a bunch of questions here we're going to go through. So if you're ready, we're going to go through them. Um, first one's someone who says he's a distant cousin. <laughs> I just wants to meet you. But uh, first one really is, do you have a preference when it comes to linear versus rotation hitting? If so, what benefits are there in the preferred approach? <laughs> That's always been a, a fun one because so many people think things are just linear. So many people think things are just rotational. It's a swing. And in order to swing, if you really paid attention, you need both. So a, a, an elite hitter uses a combination of both swings is what me and my hitting coach, Howard Carrier, like to call. It's a semicircular swing. It's not complete circle. It's not a completely straight swing. It's something that is more of like a semicircle. So if you're looking at like a NASCAR racetrack where they got that straightaway and then the curve and then the straightaway and the curve, that's basically like what a swing is. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good answer there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it takes to get to the elite level. Let's see. And that coming up next is from um, Troy Olson. He wants to know what kind of bat you prefer, balance or inloaded, and why? Bats are very a very touchy subject obviously i work with Marini in the development of all of our bats we just came out with our new cf7 um, we do make an end load and we also do make a balance bat um, it comes down to a person's strengths and preference um, i prefer more of an end load for myself i have some athletes that i train that are strong enough to swing an end load and then i have some athletes that just feel more comfortable with you know going with a more balanced bat at the end of the day it comes down to what the athlete is comfortable with what size bat did you swing when you Oh, it's different. We were just talking about that right now. When I was 16, 17, 18, my first year in junior college, I was swinging a 34, 30-ounce bat. 
So that's what I, I had been told that yeah. by a manufacturer. And I was yeah. going, she's swinging a baseball bat. Yeah, I actually had one bat that was a 34-34. It was a completely slow pitch bat that I swung when I was 18. Well, that's heavier than a slow yeah. pitch bat even. <laughs> yeah, it, I swung that when I was 18. It was in Easton. Um, but at, at this point right now, when I was ending my career all through USA softball with the with a lot of people not understanding where we were at in 2000, we were at 40 feet with a white ball. Swing a 34-34 or 34-30 wasn't going to happen. So I went actually to a 34-27, and that's what I stayed with my whole career. Okay, that's a more more reasonable toss. bat. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> more, more reasonable bat. Yeah, that's what I'd expect. To, yeah. <laughs> well, I knew you, you had a heavy bat. That's yes, what I asked. Yes, well, you got to remember, when you're facing like uh, Ikikawaino from Japan that's throwing, you know, 77 miles an hour from 43 feet, you're not swinging anything real heavy. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, um, give me a second here. Uh, oh, this was a good one, though. This one met you in Jackson, Mississippi. Paul did and said they're still looking for that ball you hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, and we just went over this. What are you doing now? Are you doing clinics, he wants to know. Where, oh, yeah. where are these clinics? Yeah, we do camps and clinics. I have a new company called Ruthless Sports Training. Um, we have a lot of elite athletes that have come on board as far as our trainers and, and um, that teach all over the country. We actually uh, will be heading all over this year. We head off into Nicaragua for a clinic. We're going to Hawaii for a clinic. We'll be in Chicago. We'll be in Texas. We'll be in uh, Iowa. Um, so we're, we're all over. I mean, you can go onto the website and kind of see where I'm at. That's at ruthlesssportstraining.com. Um, but yeah, I do camps and clinics. I don't do very many one-on-one -on -one lessons anymore. I do do lessons in Pittsburgh and in Georgia at, uh, with, the Pit with the Lady Roadrunners in Pittsburgh. It's a whole organization I work with there. And then in Georgia, it's out at a facility called Today's Faces. So where in Texas are you going? Since I'm from there, I'm always curious. Texas, I'm actually going to be in San Antonio, I believe. That's a nice city. Yes. That's a very nice city to go to. Now, Janelle wants to know, why did you pick the college you went to? Okay, well, I went to a junior college in Florida, Palm Beach Community College, and the reason why I went there is because growing up, you know, I wasn't very an academic, a very big academic student. You know, I, I'll say it, I wasn't, I wasn't really ready to go D1. Um, I did take my visits to UCLA, and I did take a visit to, you know, other schools, but, you know, at the end of the day, I felt more comfortable with a 1 to, like, 30 student ratio versus a 1 to 500 student ratio, right. you know, so... It was a better fit for me that's to a, go junior college. That's a good thing. If it fits better, that's the main thing we're looking for. How much of the game is mental? And do you have any tips for mental preparation when at bat? It's huge. It's huge. Mental preparation is everything. If you're not mentally prepared to succeed, you're not going to succeed. I don't care how your physical attributes are. Um, there's a lot of, of athletes that are really good but just don't have the mental you know, capacity to stand in a box and really take it to that next level. Um, I was always one that was, was mentally prepared because I just wanted it. You know, I wanted to be that person with two outs, bases loaded, the game you know, winning hit come from me. I was like, I wanted that pressure. Um, and I trained with that pressure. So it all comes down to, to training. Um, we actually used a lot of sports psychologists with the U.S. team. Ken Revisa was one of the first sports psychologists I worked with in 2000 for that Olympic Games. Um, Jim Bauman with the U.S. Olympic Committee, he, he was one of our sports psychologists that I learned a lot from. Uh, we actually have one right now we've introduced to uh, Mount SAC. Um, Lene, she does a great job with us. She's actually on my staff with Ruthless Sports Training. We will be doing mental training at a lot of our camps from now on. We want to get people involved in understanding that you can be the best physical athlete. You could be an ox, you know, but if you don't know how to use your brain to take it to that whole next level, you're not going to be able to be there. And uh, so th I think for most of you that, that want to take your game to the next level, watch it. You know, like we are here today, you know, I'm a coach now. And I'm here with the head coach from Mount Sac, and we're here watching the coaching. You know, in order to get better, you have to learn from the best. So we want to see these games. We want to learn from the coaching staffs that are out here, what they're calling. We want to look at the players, see if they're making adjustments. And, you know, if the coaches are asking them to make adjustments, you learn from watching the game, and you learn from actually talking to the best in the game. Very good. I also think you need to be mentally prepared for a game where – uh, striking out seven out of getting out seven out of ten times is oh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's one thing too. Is a lot of people look at the numbers. I never looked at numbers. You know, I didn't want to know if I was hitting you know 500. I didn't want to know if I was the the highest batting average. I didn't want to know anything. The only thing that cared to me was if my team won. And you know that 
I have a job. And every time, you know, people go, oh, well, you're the number four hitter. You, you're expected to hit home runs all the time. Or, you know, you're this and that. It's like, I'm only the number four hitter if we get there in the first inning. Oh, yeah. You know, if we get one, two, three out, then I'm a number one hitter. <laughs> you know, so, all changed. so everything changes with every at bat. You have a different, different job. Sometimes my job is to hit the ball on the ground ball on the right side to move a runner. You know, sometimes my, ball, my job is to hit a line drive through the gap to get a runner to third. Sometimes my job is just to hit the highest fly ball and hope it goes the farthest it can. And if it gets caught in the outfield, it scores the runner from third. You know, everything is a different job. Can I bunt? I can bunt with the best of them. Was I ever asked to bunt? Not really. Two times I can remember Coach Condre asked me to bunt, and I actually missed the first time because I never got it before. <laughs> and then the second time I got it down. So I'm 500 with bunts. But it, he also made a comment. You know, he said if we were bunting, we were in trouble. <laughs> so... That's funny. Oh, my. Hold on. My too much time went by there. Okay. Um, did you play other – Bill wants to know, did you play other sports uh, or was softball at all the time? Um, I played other sports like in, in school and stuff, like not actually competitively, you know, with just friends out at the park. I played basketball with them. I was a huge basketball fan with the Lakers. I could tell you anything about the 80s Lakers, you know, all the way through the 90s. That was my thing. You, you think I was a basketball player. I couldn't tell you very much about the Dodgers, but I could tell you everything about the Lakers. So people would have thought I was going to be a basketball player, but, you know, there's not too many short basketball players like myself. Spud Webb. Yeah, Spud <laughs> Webb. But, you know, but so at the end of the day, you know, that was really the only sport I followed. You know, I played a little soccer with PE, you know, but I never played any competitive sport other than softball. Okay. And then um, Robin wants to know, what do you do uh, for fun during a softball season to relax? Um, balance is everything. That is huge. Uh, I, I really believe in balance. Um, for me, where I was at is professional and like, and as far as like Olympic level, you know, I took our downtime and I really took advantage of our downtime that was away from it. From September to December, I spent a lot of time with my family going camping, you know, riding dune buggies and, and quads and stuff like that. Definitely getting away from the sport for a little while is healthy. And then, you know, I would hit it real hard come January again. Um, a lot of people are different, but I believe you have to have some kind of balance in your life to to step away from the game for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, keep your mind just yeah. you know, open it up. What is, uh, Mich Michelle wants to know, what do you do to keep yourself primed during off season? And what are your favorite infield drills for practice? Well, during off season, like I said, I like to balance. I don't spend too much time in the off season. I always hit, that is one thing I always did. I always would find time to hit. Um, when I do all my T drills from high to low, in to out, I would definitely do as much T work as possible because I'm always pretty much on my own, especially when you guys get to this level. There's not a lot of people around you to train with. You know, we're all over the country. Um, so you, you definitely find your time to get, you know, your one-on-one -on -one with the T, maybe get in on a pitching machine, a local cage somewhere. Um, when it comes to fielding drills, just keeping it real basic. I would always play catch with somebody, you know, do a, you know, short hop drills and stuff like that. But you know, during the off season, it's more of a time for you to actually get in a gym more than anything. That's when you want to do your workouts. That's when you want to hit your weights. That's when you want to do your treadmill runs. That's when you want to do your sprints. You want to take the time to build the body back up. And then during season, I really didn't do much of that. I didn't do any weightlifting, didn't do any, any sprints and any stuff like that because I wanted my body to be fresh for competition, not so much be, you know, striving for energy and all that stuff because I went to the gym in the morning or something. Okay. Okay. Now, um, David wants to know, what do you recommend for a few girls in a hitting slump besides lessons and practice? Anything fun or, uh, or superstitious to team dugouts? Well, a hitting slump is something that ends up, I think, more mental. Um, we're all going to have bad games. You know, we're all going to have these days when you go 0 for it or going to have another day you go 0 for it. One of my biggest hitting slumps happened actually in the worst time. I went 0 for it in the first couple games of the Olympics in 2004. And... You know, for most people, they're like, oh, you're in a slump, you're in a slump. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not really in a slump. I just, I still moved the, uh, moved the runners. I didn't get on. You know, yeah, I didn't get the home runs that everyone was, you know, looking for. I didn't get the big hits that everyone was looking for, but I still hit the ball. You know, and a lot of people got to look at it. You know, when it's a slump, it's just, it, everyone's going to have peaks and everyone's going to have valleys. You, you just got to find your way through it and not get real mental. Just, just trust in what you do. Do what you normally do. Step it down to the, your T work. And then jump in on some machine work and get comfortable again before you get back out there. You know, a lot of people just try to press, 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 and keep pushing, 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 wanting more, 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 where you're just making things worse. Sometimes you just need to step back, do some T work, maybe step back, do some soft toss, some front toss, just take it nice and easy, find your groove again, and then get back out on the field. 
I find a lot of kids don't want to do tea work. No, and, 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 and I know and how important that is. I it mean, is. It is. It's really funny because it's true. They I'll think it's like little country. kids do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll travel all over the country and people will be like, oh, I hate tea work. I don't do much tea work. Well, if you can't hit a ball that's still 50 <laughs> times in each spot, completely solid, then you got a lot of work to do. Right. You know, and when, when I train my kids, we go through it and we'll hit hundreds of balls off the tee, hundreds. And they have to be correct hundreds of times right. You know, because if you can do that, and then you can go to the soft toss and you hit hundreds of balls soft toss never missing and then you go to front toss hitting it never missing and then you go to a machine and you never miss now you're ready for the ball that's moving from the pitcher you know i used to go to the uh, texas, texas rangers fan living in dallas mm -hmm. used to go to the game and when the Mar was, mariners would come a king griffey he would go over there and i promise you he'd do t work just all by himself yeah. for half an hour yeah you know because i'd get there like 4 30 when they're warming up and i'm going if this guy one of the best in all of baseball yeah. can do t work for half an hour you know it's pretty important. My tea my work, when I work every part of my tea work, it'll take an hour and a half for me to do my tea work. Okay. So, so a lot of time. In yeah. It. And so like hitting, when I do a hitting workout, when I was getting ready for the Olympics in 08 and 04 and everything, you know, my hitting workout on my own was over three and a half, four hours. It's a lot of time. Oh, yeah. But that's probably why you could hit the ball. <laughs> probably <laughs> hey, goes hand in hand. perfect. goes hand in hand. Here's our last one from Kevin. And wants, uh, wants help for hitting the uh, outside pitch. Help for hitting the outside pitch, letting the ball get deep. So many fear missing the outside pitch. So they swing too early and they hit it off the tip of their bat. I'm going to tell you right now, it's better to foul the ball straight into the dugout and get a piece of it than to hit the tip of it and put it fair in a little spinner that's going to get you out. So a lot of kids don't understand that. If you want to hit an outside pitch, it's got to get back to where your belly button is when you hit that ball, not in front of your legs. It's got to get to the belly button and you got to go with. Sounds like good advice. And where can uh, where are you on Twitter? What's your Twitter handle? Uh, I believe it's got Bustos. If not, you can always follow the Ruthless Sports Training Twitter feed. Okay. Um, you can always follow and check us out on the website at ruthlesssportstraining.com. If you're interested in camps, clinics, or seeing where I'm going to be, or you want to hold one yourself, you can go and, and email us there. Um, you know, everything you need is on the net nowadays we actually have a dvd if you guys are looking to train and you want to see what it is i do and how i train my kids we got dvds on the website and uh i've actually met a man in colorado at the sparkler tournament a grandfather that trained two of his kids off of that dvd so it's got all the info you need to get everything you, you need to be the best well crystal i appreciate you taking the time to come thank on you. here and i know my fans do thanks thank a lot thank you have a good one you too looking for a softball bat do you want to say thirty dollars SoftballJunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount on all regular price bats on the website. That's right, $30 discount. Just text the word FASTPITCH to 555-888 and Gary will send you a discount code good for $30 off your next softball bat at SoftballJunk.com. FYI, that code's also good at the Arlington, Texas store. Welcome back. Now that last short clip, that was my daughter Amanda, and she was telling you about my website, softballjunk.com. Make sure you text the word FASTPITCH to 555-888 and get your discount code for $30 off your next softball bat. You can use that code at checkout, save yourself $30, and you can use the code over and over and over and over. It's a great deal. You just need to text FASTPITCH to 555-888, and I'll text you back the discount code. Now, if you enjoy this show, I ask you at least check out my website, softballjunk.com, the next time you're looking for softball equipment. Now, if I offer a competitive price, well, please buy from me and show some support for all the free content I bring you week after week. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Please tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV show and make sure and take a look at my website. Like I said, that's fastpitch.tv. So until next time, this is your host, Gary Leland, saying goodbye and thanks for watching. <laughs>